good evening and I'm just closing down my little extra boxes. I'm following my instructions, still struggling with uh, learning to use uh, Facebook with the changes, Facebook Live with the changes that occurred in the seven months I was not using it. Welcome to Living in the Light. Tishy and I want to say hi and hope that you're having a really good day. Uh, she's getting kind of bored. She was waiting and waiting and didn't know why it was so late today. Of course, it is too late today because I was having a wonderful afternoon visit with some friends. Maskless, having a little lunch and a little conversation and a lot of laughter. And I got to tell you something. Laughter is an amazing healing power. We need more of it in our lives, absolutely. And I got a good dose today. So uh, I'm feeling pretty well and happy and whole. And I had said at the end of yesterday's video that I was going to give you a break and let you kind of chew on what I said yesterday. But I have to keep going because there's so much more to say. You know, since I started on Monday going back to our videos, um, I find that I've been getting a little, well, actually, it was a little longer than that, wasn't it? Anyway, I found that I was getting frustrated and felt like, oh, I don't know if this video is any good. Maybe I should cancel it. You've probably even noticed I had a couple of stops and then restarts and then do-overs. And I realized I hadn't done this in so long that I had all of this built up, seven seven months worth of stuff that I wanted to you know, to pour out and, and have you, you know, to share with you. So I've got to pull in the reins and slow it down. And uh, for me, that's next to impossible. I kind of run on passion, you know. So I'm going to try to calm down a little. And today, our main exploration is going to be on... Uh, it's called Prescription from a Metaphysician and a Spiritual Vaccine Clinic. Sounds like fun, doesn't it? Okay, well, it is fun for me. Before we get there, I have to tell you, I've got a great sense of excitement at this moment because I'm anticipating. I'm anticipating good. Well, you know what? I've actually already received a lot of the good. Duh. <laughs> you know, when you live in the flow of circulation, of giving and receiving and giving and receiving, um, just because we give doesn't mean that we sit there and wait to receive. We don't even think about it. Any more than our one part of our heart, uh, you know, anticipates the flow that will be pumped into it you know, through the system, it just happens. And that's what the flow is like. And um, I did, I didn't realize it till right this minute, but um, I, I went to Goodwill. So I know that as you give, so shall you receive. And that very, very night, I got an unexpected gift um, in assistance in paying for my plane ticket to go to see Tristan. So you don't give to receive. You give because you have already received. But just by the law, you don't sit and expect it. Just let it come. So I want to give thanks to that wonderful, loving person who helped me to get my ticket because it's a true blessing. That way I'll have more money to spend down there. Oh, oh. <laughs> so, also, while I was at Goodwill, here's a little heads up for you guys. Goodwill does not take hangers. Remember that big old bag of hangers I had? They wouldn't take them. So, they said, I said, well, what am I going to do with them? And they said, put them in recycle if nobody wants them. <sighs> so... Make sure before you buy hangers that you really need them because we don't need them in landfills. And I'm hoping that the type of plastic they're made out of 
will be recyclable. Um, most hangers don't have any notices on them, you know, little symbols or anything. So, so that's my little um, my little uh, tidbit for today. And uh, I also wanted to talk very briefly about unresolvable tolerations. You know, we've been talking about these little things that that bug us in our lives, and uh, there's some things we can do stuff about, like my closet. <gasps> And my shower curtain, speaking of which, I put my shower curtain up, I cleaned my, my shower, it was so wonderful, I didn't even want to take a shower this morning, but I noticed after I put my shower curtain up, I stood back and I looked, and I've got this geometric uh, different shades of blue and gray shower curtain, and right next to it is like a... Uh, a Middle Eastern design sheer curtain that I cover my closet with because that's not a door, it's I cover it with a curtain. And I I looked at it and they don't even come close to matching and I said, I like it. Isn't it nice to be able to like who you are, the way you are, without having to do anything for other people to make them happy with who you are? So, I mean, it's one thing if you're being really offensive and you really should know about it. But so often we shape ourselves by other people's expectations. And I, frankly, don't want to be, you know, uh, uh, an, imag uh, an image of someone else's expectations. I want to be me. And if you're not comfortable in your own skin, if you're not comfortable being you, I so invite you from the bottom of my heart, please try to learn what a wonderful person you are and how to love yourself because that's very good. So let us then, uh, oh, so uh, about the things that you can't fix, you got to learn to live with them. So that's recyclable hangers. And also I'm having real challenges with my little cowlicks here. I get these little cowlicks and I think they're pretty ugly. Um, I was told today by my dear friend Kim that oh, they're cute. Oh, they're cute. Then you wear them. <laughs> it's what I got. Do the best I can with what I have and let it go. So if it's a toleration you cannot do anything about, stop letting it bother you. Let it go. If an answer is to come, it will come. All right, so I want to go back to today, what we're going to be talking about, which is... Um, a prescription from a metaphysician. We talked a little bit the other day about a metaphysician is someone who uh, looks at the um, what is behind manifestation, at the causes. We say in Unity that um, that metaphysics is a philosophy based on the um, the belief that uh, the universe makes sense. So it's looking for those principles that make sense. Now, I am what is called a, I call it a pragmatic metaphysician. That means that I'm very um, uh, fact, science even based, but looking for even the spiritual within the science. And uh, so that that's why the things, the messages I give are usually based in what? Cause and effect, the law. I'm very, very uh, strong on that. So we were talking yesterday about the uh, the pandemic that is a pandemic of consciousness. It preceded COVID, and COVID is another um, expression, another manifestation that is here. It has come up for healing. I've always said one of the things that I think... Um, uh, COVID brought with us, the, the pandemic brought with it, was uh, because of the separation that was required in order for us to stop its progress, which would have stopped a lot faster if people would have surrendered their ego and done for the higher good of all rather than thinking about their own personal freedoms. If we'd done it sooner. But in for those of us who followed the rules, who isolated, who did what we had to do, we learned more, I think, about what is really important. 
And I think that that's something we all want to think about. What is really important in our lives? And that is a healing. So what came up from healing is there needed to be a greater division so we would feel the suffering and get a greater healing. Unfortunately, maybe uh, our consciousness wasn't ready for it because we are still very divided. And that's why we need a prescription from a metaphysician. Because in the human sense, we're only looking at it at a, uh, we're looking at it as a human level rather than a spiritual level. So I want you to understand that, um, first of all, I wanted to make a note. I, I just saw my notes down there. Um, for those of you who might comment on the message as I'm, as I'm giving my, our little visit today, uh, I can't see any comments. I haven't figured that out yet with whatever the way the Facebook, Facebook format is. I've tried and tried. I'm sorry. I cannot see your comments. So if you made them, sorry, can't see them. I will look at them after. So the condition that we have, and I want you to hear this, that it, it is serious. Um, it is terminal. But it is treatable. Okay? If we do not change, then it is terminal. If we change, it is treatable. And where the treatment begins, it has to be both individual and collective. But it begins within each one of us. We make a decision that we want to live differently, that we want to be healthy, whole, and hale. How do we heal or cure? You remember, we, w we don't want to just heal. Because to heal is to uh, take care of the immediate symptoms. To cure is to make this not recur again. So with our division, one of the things we want to look at uh, as a, uh, there's a symptom, which is division, and what therefore is the treatment for that? How are we going to treat it? And for me, one of the first things we have to do to treat it is to find our common ground. We need to find things and connect with other people about the things we agree about, not about the things that divide us. Um, I, I am very fortunate to have daughters-in-law that I... Um, really get along with well and I, I really I like them I don't just love them I like them a couple of things that that really drew us together in my in my opinion uh, one day I went to see my son my he and his wife were not yet married they've been married for like going on 30 years maybe it's even past 30 years oh my god time flies anyway when I went over to visit Nick was at work and April had been making homemade chicken noodle soup. And on the bed, she had newspapers all spread out with noodle dough drying to get ready to cut. You want to talk about winning a, a mother-in-law's heart? You just show that you're cooking homemade noodles for her son. Well, in my book, that's the way it works anyway. I cannot tell you right that moment. April won my heart, along with the fact that she's just a nice person and she cries at movies. <laughs> we'll sit and watch a movie together and I'll be thinking, oh, and she's like, <laughs> that's how sensitive she is. And I love her so much. Wish I could talk to her more, but that's the way it goes. My other daughter-in-law, my other twin's uh, wife, Heather, um, I watch her and she is such a, a wonderful and a creative mom. She does um, very, uh, uh, she does the things that I did and that I would like to, to have done with my kids. Um, so I'm very happy. I'm the, because, you know, if you want to make someone else happy, treat their loved ones well. And they will be 
loving you forever. So that's what we have to do. We have to look at the things that bind us together. Of course, in the case of my daughters-in-law, it is it is the love of my children. Now, it, it, it was not that way in every case, but I always pray that I did not build a wicked animosity between, you know, any of my um, children's uh, mates and girlfriends and boyfriends and whatever. Um, but, you see, you've got to find common ground. Common ground in this case was love of my children by other people. We can find common ground with about anybody. As I've said before, if the bills that are brought up in Congress, if we didn't know what team was supporting them, we might find that we would agree uh, more often than we disagree. We want to get to know people, but if you've got an issue with what's going on in the world, uh, whether you're arguing with someone about whether climate change is real or anything else even the way a turkey should be cut on thanksgiving you know stop stop remember what i talked about mrs Millardo yesterday our landlord be nice kids don't fight and so we say be nice kids oh god thanksgiving is coming thanksgiving is a huge time for you know family arguments to to come up over you know all kinds of issues that are going on in the world you know, you don't talk baseball, politics, or religion. That's what we were always told. I guess football, too, because we're going to be in the midst of that. But um, talk about what you agree about. Some people say, well, you should be a grown-up and be able to discuss these things. And actually, no. If someone doesn't have ears to hear, if they want more to prove their point than to explore possibilities, you will harm a relationship. You will cause more division. It is much better to get together and talk about the good we can do as a team, whatever that is. Even it's about cleaning up the streets in town, you know. Um, we live in such a beautiful little rural uh, place, and yet when I walk down one of our very rural roads, I see beer cans and nip bottles and uh, coffee cups and, you know, so I try to remember to bring a bag with me, and as I walk, I collect trash. Don't get paid for it. Nobody notices. Nobody cares about it. I go back down the street the next day, and it's still there. But I can do this little bit of cleaning up, and maybe somebody will see me and appreciate it. And you know what? Let me tell you something. When you walk around with purple hair, people see you. <laughs> and I hope it's like what it says in the Bible you know, where uh, where others will see the good that you do and give glory to God. So, and when I say give glory to God, I mean glory to all that is good. The Spirit, God is good, all good, everywhere present, all knowing, all powerful. So, when you do good, you are being godlike. So, you may not have purple hair and stand out in a crowd, but I promise you, if you try to learn to bind people together to help to to heal the you know the divide we will be much closer to curing our our problems are and they're not only they're only familial mm. she loves to do that and i can't resist it when she wants me to kiss her on the head so um you know, but they are they are changes that will change the world and make it a better and a safer, a happier and a healthier place to live. A place where the planet is honored and uh, each other is honored and we have stronger marriages and families and communities and we can be a part of that. And so the prescription for division is looking for common ground and starting to build a foundation there, okay? Um, okay, so we have uh, the other prescript. Oh, the, so the next one is untruth. We're dealing with a lot of conspiracy theories and lies and and uh, uh, manipulation. So the prescription for these ills is, first of all, common sense. Common sense and critical thinking. 
A lot of people don't even know what critical thinking is, but basically it's looking at a situation and determining how that how that situation came to be, what's its roots, what keeps it going. So it's kind of getting down, digging down into the details so you can understand something. To look at it critically, not as a critic, but as one who seeks to understand. Um, okay, and then we have ignorance. Ignorance is another part of this symptom of this condition of division we have. Ignorance, it, it just, uh, we have to become educated and enlightened. We have to make sure our children and their children are getting educated and enlightened. We've gone through a period of dumbing down. This did not happen overnight. This has been going on probably since um, the real dumbing down started with technology where people stopped using personal experience, conversations, etc., and started using technology, especially violent, violent games and stuff. I don't care. You can tell me it's only a game, but or only a song, only a movie. I don't care. Tell me what you want, but I will tell you this. Violence breeds violence. Ignorance breeds ignorance. The prescription for ignorance is enlightenment. It is education. It is learning. Um... Okay, and then we have, uh, we have to get, in order to cure, we have to get to the cause. So always look to these causes. So the cause of division is untruth. The cause of division, uh, the cause of division is um, not seeing ourselves as we are in truth, which is interconnected, interdependent, and one. The cure is principle, not personal. We make too many things personal, whether that personal is between um, two baseball teams. Uh, it, it gets too personal, you know. Um, but when we go to principle, instead of personal, we take the emotion out of it. Let's think about the piano. If you sit down and you know how to play a piano... You can play a piece, and every time you know you can play that piece, and it's going to come out exactly the same way, provided the piano is tuned, I would like to say. So you make sure the piano's <laughs> working right. And why? Because every key you're going to hit is going to have the same sound every time you sit down there. There may be tonal changes, but every key is going to hit the same going to make the same vibration, the same sound. Can you imagine sitting down at a piano to play it and it comes out different every time or you have no idea how it's going to come out or you have no idea? That's more like me trying to sit down at the piano and make any sense at all. But because of the principles of mathematics, science, and, you know, the musical principles, it works. That's how things work, by principle, not personal. Don't get our personalities into stuff. Stick with principle. Um, we looked at a little bit yesterday. I just want to gloss it over a little bit about how, why, why do we buy the lie? Why do we listen to the conspiracy theories? I think one of the reasons is we don't like the alternative. It's, it's uncomfortable, it's inconvenient, it's not the way we wanted things to turn out. What are we doing there? We're looking at personality, not principle. We're letting ego run our lives, not spirit. And spirit is a true power inside each of us. Then we're dealing with, um, with hate. And hate is one of the greatest dividers. But we have to remember, I think it was Martin Luther King said, you cannot drive out hate with hate. You can only drive out hate with love. So you may be tempted to hate someone, but I invite you to try to look beyond that, to see deeper. Most of the people we hate or would like to hate have, their, have ignorance, unresolved issues, it doesn't mean their behavior is acceptable or that we should tolerate it. Exactly the opposite. We need to hold people accountable for their behavior. 
If someone's get up, going to get up and get people all riled up telling them, telling lies, they have to be called out on those lies. They have to be say, really? Prove it. Prove it. Because they can't. But we don't want to punish them. We want them to learn. We don't want them to learn because we think we can be the boss of them. We want them to learn because their lives will be happier and healthier if they learn. Think about light. We talked about walking in the light side. Did you notice? The light doesn't fight the dark. The light just, it's the light. It just shines. You are the light inside of you. I know this because you're watching this. If you stuck with me for 25 minutes, 26 minutes, you are awakened and you're excited and you're excited about being a powerful change maker in the world. Be the light that you already are. Don't be afraid. Jesus said, don't hide your light under a basket. Put it on a lampstand so all people can see it and give glory to God. If you're looking for glory to be given to you, forget it. If you're looking for glory to be given to you, you're looking for the wrong thing. That's your ego that wants the glory. Your spirit, your soul, the light that you are, wants people to be struck by your light because that way it'll ignite the light inside of them. It's a good thing. Oh, okay. Whew. Going back to finishing up here. Uh, so the prescription, uh, and then you need a vaccination. Okay. So a vaccination goes into your system, and it it establishes itself in a way that it, your body gets to know the disease. They get to understand the disease and how to fight it. They use weakened or dead uh, um, viruses that they put in so that you still recognize it, you understand it, and you know what it is. See, that's what learning is about. That's what enlightenment is about. So the vaccination is to become enlightened about what is going on, and then you will be ready when you see it, and you will be able to stand up against it. So that is inner protection from inside then so metaphysically it's about enlightenment now if we look at the uh the other uh, type of preventative things that we talk about wash your hands metaphysically washing your hands can be like the hands always represent the works your works so we always say keep your works clean okay keep yourself healthy. And then we've got the mask. Now, you know, the mask covers your nose and your mouth. It doesn't cover your eyes. Glasses are helpful for that. But, but what happens is you are to see, see and observe what's going on. And when you have, if you're metaphysically interpreting the mask, you are not allowing yourself to inhale or ingest the negativity from outside, okay? Nor are you able to express or send out negativity from your own being. You know, that's why I love metaphysics. And I think I'm going to uh, let you go on that. Now, one final thing. I want you to know that the... As I said before, that uh, the that God works in the physician as well as in prayer. And, of course, prayer always comes first. You pray for the guidance and then act accordingly. And I want you to know now that they talk about future pandemics, epidemics. But did you know that right now scientists are already working on potential pandemics and epidemics for the future? May we receive their work with joy and not say it came too quick. It can't be good. Well, that's it for today. 
So I hope you have a wonderful evening. Uh, and tomorrow is Veterans Day on the National Day calendar. So we remember to honor our vets. If you know one, write them a letter, give them a call, send them, send them an email, whatever. And also it is Ice Cream Sunday Day. Ooh. I, in case you don't catch that one in July and another month, there's like one of them is Hot Fudge Sunday Day. But tomorrow's Ice Cream Sunday Day. How about having a Sunday? I may just think about that. Until tomorrow, have a great day, and God bless you good. Bye-bye.